So you've got a blueprint, but you need something to be randomly chosen, specifically a random actor to be influenced. Well, for today's video, we're going to use my movement along a spline blueprint. If you haven't seen that video, you can click the card up in the top or in the description below. And instead of picking one specific actor to move along the spline, we're going to change things up a bit. We're going to pick a random actor in two different ways. We'll either be using a specific list of actors that you can manually put in, that'll be affected, or we will say one specific type and just pick a random one out of that. So let's get into that. We're inside the blueprint right now. You can ignore all of this. This is just the functionality. Uh, that's not what this tutorial is about. But we use a actor variable here. And right now that's just a public actor variable that we can then give value inside of the viewport. But what if we want to choose between multiple ones at random? If we want to do that, we can just copy this actor variable, uh, call it actor array, and we can change the type from a normal variable to an array. This will be able to hold multiple variable values. Make sure the actor array also is public. We can set the normal actor in this case to not being public anymore. Then at begin play, before we do everything else in the blueprint, we pick out that actor array, uh, we get a copy, and we also get the last index. Then we get a random int in range. We plug the last index into the max and then the return value into the get node for the array. So now what we'll do is we'll get a random index between zero and the last index of the array. So it'll get a random actor in this case. Then we simply set that random actor to our actor variable at begin play. And now we will have the ability to make a list of actors that can potentially be chosen and whenever we start a game it will choose one at random to use in this blueprint. We can now see actor array and we can add elements to it. So we can say uh, maybe we want to have this one and maybe we want to have a second element to it and we want to have uh, this fire over here and maybe we can have a third element and that'll be this block over here. So now when we start the game, it will either move this along the spline, this one along the spline, or this one along the spline. So this is very useful if you want to have a selection of different types of actors that can potentially be chosen to, in this case, move along the spline, or if you want to have a specific subsection of a specific type. So we have a lot of fires in this map, but maybe we don't want all of the fires to be able to be chosen because we have a fire that's on top of the torch right here and we don't want that to be chosen. So in that case, we can say uh, just manually add all of the other fires to this array list. So starting the gameplay, we can see the fire has been chosen to be traveling along the spline. Now, if we ignore all that for a moment, but if we play it again at random, now the blue block has been chosen because it's entirely random. So if we run again, it'll be the fire again. You might think, hey, but we haven't seen this block yet. We've selected that one, right? It's random. So there will be repeats. There's a one in three chance that it'll be the fire again, but it's the blue block again. And what if you have a specific type of actor and you've got like five of them in the level and you want one of those specifically to be chosen? Well, there's a very easy little change we can make to the blueprint we have here that'll just choose a specific type of actor at random. Instead of having a actor array variable, what we'll do is we'll get actors of class and we use that output, which is an array, to go into the inputs we, uh, we had before, which is the get node and the last index node. And then we will make this actor class a variable. We'll set that one to public. We can set the actor array one to not being public anymore. Matter of fact, we can just delete it because we're not using it anymore. And if we just run this node before everything else, so now I can say, for instance, I want the uh, fire object to be the actor that's chosen. So now every fire object actor in this map, which is every fire you see except the one on the torch actually, because that's just a particle system, has the potential to be chosen to travel along this spline. So it's a little bit more tricky to see the randomization here because obviously it's always going to be a flame now. 
uh, but it'll be one of the fires that are floating around here at random. Which, by the way, if you want to learn how to make these fire particle systems, I also have a tutorial about that. I'll link it down below in the description. It's a fairly easy system, but it, uh, it works fairly well. And in short, that's how you pick a random actor to apply to whatever blueprint you want. In this case, we did a movement along spline because that's a tutorial I did recently, but any blueprint you're using an actor variable you can use this technique for so thanks a lot for this kind commenter to ask about more clarification on these subjects if there's anything you want to know do leave it down below in the comments and i'll try to get to making a tutorial about it as soon as i can until the next time though bye